In this video, we'll be taking derivatives of functions. So when you do this, you actually obtain the slope function of your original function. And to know how to do this, we need to know the basic differentiation rules, which are the constant rule, power rule, product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. So let's go over these one by one. Okay, I actually kind of baited you because <laughs> our first rule is the constant rule, but we're also going to be learning uh, a little of the other basics um, that you need in order to take the derivative of functions. So this first line that you see here is the actual constant rule. So when you take the derivative of any constant, so that's any value, number that doesn't have like a variable beside it, so that's just zero, okay? This next line says that if you take the derivative of this expression that's made up of two different terms, you can actually take the derivative one by one. So you can tackle one term first here, and then you can just take the derivative of the next term and so on and so, so forth, okay? This line says that if you take the derivative of just the variable x, you just get one, okay? It's always like that. And finally, this line is our constant multiple rule. So what if there's a constant behind another function? Then that would just equal to the constant multiplied by the derivative okay, of that function. So let's do a really quick example just to see where we are. Uh, so for example, what's the derivative of 6x? Okay. We see that it's in this form where we have a constant 6 behind a function, which is just, in this case, x. So it's just the constant 6, and we multiply that by the derivative of x, okay, the derivative of x, which again, by this third line, is just 1. And so the derivative of this function 6x is just 6. Okay, the first actual rule that we're going to learn is the power rule. So the power rule is applicable when you have your variable raised to a certain constant, okay? So all it's essentially saying, well, this is how you mathematically represent the power rule, but all it's essentially saying is you bring down the exponent, so you multiply the whole thing by the exponent. See, look here, we multiply the whole thing by the original exponent. And then you just subtract 1 in the exponent after. So it's simple. You bring this down, and then you subtract 1. That's it. Okay? So let's try uh, doing an example now. So let's try taking the derivative of, for example, uh, x cubed. Okay? So again, we want to bring down this exponent, and then you minus 1 to the exponent. So how does that look like? We just have 3, since we brought down the original exponent, times uh, x to the 3 minus 1, which is just 2. So our final derivative of x cubed is just 3x squared. Now we move on to something a little more challenging, which is the product rule. Okay. So when we know when to use the product rule, so like the name implies, it's when two functions are multiplied with each other. Okay, so that's when you know to use product rule. In this case, we're multiplying f of x and g of x together. And we see that the derivative of this is simply the derivative of the first function here. In this case, that's f of x multiplied by the second function, the original function. Then you add the first original function multiplied by the derivative of the second original function. Okay, that's quite confusing, so let's try doing an example. So let's try taking the derivative, okay, of x minus 2 multiplied by x squared. Okay, so here you can kind of see that our first function is x minus 2, so this is our f of x, okay? And our second function is x squared, and that's our g of x. So knowing this, we can kind of start taking the derivative. So according to this formula, first we take the derivative of f of x. 
term by term, that would be derivative of x is just 1. Okay, so that's just 1. Minus derivative of any constant is 0. Then you copy g of x. Now you add this to first copying f of x. So you copy f of x, and then you take the derivative of g of x. And by power rule, we want to bring this 2 down. Then we minus 1 to the 2. Okay. And so that would just be multiplied by 2x. You can simplify this entire expression as x squared plus 2x squared minus 4x. And so we ultimately end up with 3x squared minus 4x. And this is our derivative of this function using product rule. Next up is the quotient rule, and you can kind of think of it as like a variation of the product rule. Okay, So the product rule, if you remember, if we multiply two different functions together, then we know to use the product rule. Similarly, the quotient rule, as the name suggests, is when you divide a function by another function. So what's the derivative of this? So in this case, we have f of x divided by g of x, and we want to take the derivative of this, okay? So we can break that down like this. It looks complicated. How I like to remember it is the first part is uh, just copy the low function. So this is the low function. Multiply that with the derivative of the high function, okay? Minus the high function multiplied by the derivative of the low function. And then the, denom the denominator of the derivative is just the low function squared. Okay. Again, it seems difficult, but once you get familiar with it, you kind of just copy-paste a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's try it. For our example, we're going to try to do the derivative of x minus 1, so that's our numerator, which is our f of x, all over x squared. So this is our g of x. Okay, so let's try doing this. So the first part is we want to copy the low function, right? So this is the g of x, and we just want to copy the low function. So that's just x squared. Next, we want to take the derivative of the high function, the numerator, which is f of x. And again, using our tips and constant rule that I showed earlier, we can take this term by term, and the derivative of x is just 1, minus the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, Then we minus, this time we copy-paste the top function, so it's just x minus 1. And then our low function, we can take the derivative of that using uh, power rule, right? So remember, we just bring this down, then we minus 1. So that would be uh, 2x, okay? All over the original function, which is x squared, is our original low function. So that would just be x squared squared. And this... Well, you can simplify this algebraically, but this essentially is our derivative of this function. And now for the last rule, we're going to be learning chain rule. For me, this is kind of like the hardest one, and I had a hard time in high school, but <clears throat> I'll try to explain it the best way I could. So chain rule is applicable when we're dealing with composite functions. Okay, Those just mean that they're functions inside functions. So what does that mean? Normally, we're used to looking at f of x, right? So the derivative of f of x is just the derivative of f of x. That's pretty straightforward. But what if, instead of doing that, oops, we input into f of x another function. So let's say we input g of x inside, okay, inside f of x. So what would be the... Uh, Derivative of this sort of composite function, where instead of x, it's g of x, right? So it's actually just the derivative of the outer function, okay, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. So that's basically chain rule. Okay, now let's try doing an example. 
Earlier, we were used to doing something like this. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, right? Because we just brought down the 3, then we minus the 1 to the 3, pretty straightforward. But now, what if instead of x, we put in another function? So let's say our g of x, so let's say our g of x is actually 2x plus 2, right? So instead of this x, we input this function. So let's see how that looks like. Okay. So now it's 2x plus 2 all cubed. So how do we take the derivative of this now? And that's how we know that we have to use chain rule. So first we just take the derivative of the outer function. So same as always, power rule is just bringing down this thing, right? The exponent, then we minus one, right? So that's power rule and we want to apply it here. So that becomes three times two x plus two. Just copy the thing inside the parenthesis, squared. So this is already this first part here. This already corresponds to here. So we're done. Now we just want to multiply that with this, which is the derivative of the inner function. And remember, our inner function is this, 2x plus 2. So our first term derivative is 2. And our second term derivative is just a constant, so that's just 0. And so our final derivative is 3 times 2x plus 2 squared. You multiply that by 2, and so you get 6 times 2x plus 2, oops, 2 squared. So this is the derivative of this function using chain rule.